This is Conversation Balloons, a podcast of interviews with experts and friends about all things generational. I'm your host, Leah Farish. It's our pleasure to welcome Darren Lewis today. We're going to be talking in um, more than this conversation, but with Darren, I will be talking about rites of passage, especially into manhood. And um, Darren was the founder in 2008 of Fathering Adventures, and you are located in North Queensland, Australia, correct? That's correct, yes. Towns, the city of Townsville. When I was researching the topic of rituals of manhood, I uh, found that there are several of uh, nothing quite like yours, but there are several activities available in Australia. And I wondered if it is because you you there in Australia have been aware of the walkabout tradition of the indigenous people. And uh, do some of the people come expecting that they're going to be having a walkabout experience? <laughs> well, actually, I don't. I think I don't think maybe some have have um, deeper connections with the the indigenous community. Um, but for me, this is actually something that's been lost uh, worldwide. So. Um, there's an Australian, um, he's world-renowned psychologist, Steve Bidoff, um, you know, he's really focused in on, on um, men and, and families and raising kids and so on. And he, um, he says that, uh, like, prior to the Industrial Revolution, so, you know, we're talking to 300 years ago, every society around the world actually had rites of passage. Um, but... Obviously, as as time's gone on, um, we've just we've lost these things. As we've lost many things, and so um, so yeah, it's not just about our indigenous um, experience. I mean, you could go anywhere around the world, and you, you look at at their indigenous experiences, and um, but you know, right? You know, Romans, um, you know, the the Jewish tradition, you know, like. The, they're full of of these rites of passage, and they come up. You know, in movies and and you know stories, books. Um, so so no, they were very prevalent, and um, and we've got to get them back. I believe, yeah. I think you're you're onto something there, and uh, I noticed that you do offer other kinds of experiences. Uh, for example, you do rites of passage times with girls too, with their fathers, but. And also you do just other kind of adventures for mm -hmm. uh, boys and men together. And um, do they all have this element of, of challenge? Is that what is the common element? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, so, so the specific thing that I'm most passionate about are rites of passage for fathers and sons. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I um that that's that's where my my heart's greatest desire is. The problem was that when we first launched here back in 2008, I just assumed that everybody would want to do this. And of course, because it is something that's being lost, uh, we only had one father-son pair um register for it. So we had to cancel it um three months after we launched. Hmm. And so we ended up having to go back to the drawing board and um what I what I came to believe was that um, the problem lies with fathers. Now, this is in our country. I can't speak about the US with any great authority, but in our country, um, a lot a lot of times, what's happening between fathers and son and their teenage sons is they're locking horns, they're locking antlers, they're they're kind of um, you know, there's there's this sort of the the boy is growing into a man physically and and beginning to challenge dad and dad's kind of trying to put him in his place and and the relationship's not real strong and so what we found was we were having men kind of contact us and saying oh no um there's no way in the world I'm going to reward my son 
to bring him along on something like this. I'm thinking you're missing it. Like this is oh. this is so important. And so I guess what I what I learned out of out of those early days, and even the real, even even my own relationship with my eldest son when he was going through adolescence, you know, you're learning for the first time, and you can, you know, I caught myself actually. We were having this stare down, the two of us. So he was 13, and and um and I remember hearing this voice, and this voice said forget about him. You've got three other sons. And I actually caught myself. Yeah, exactly. I caught myself moving away at like turning from him. And I go, no, no, I'm not going to do this. And, and I can't even remember what it was about now, but obviously that was resolved. And, and, you know, I, I guided him over the next three years into young manhood and, and beyond, obviously he's 30 now and a father himself for that matter. But what we did was it caused me to think, well, if I if I know this stuff and this is happening to me, this is this is multiplying itself around our nation, certainly, and perhaps the world. And so where we where we really aimed for um, it, we, we developed these weekend adventures. So just a much smaller offering, less than 48 hours, two nights. And um, and and really the the thrust of that was all about educating fathers about how important their roles are as well as providing an experience where relationship was being formed and forged really we kind of focus more on relationally with the younger ones and providing an experience but but i love your question Leah, and the reason why i love your question is because yes it does not so much actually for the kids in the in the younger age group but always for the dads there's an African proverb that says, I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. So when I first launched Fathering Adventures, recognising the need for fathers and the need for, for boys becoming men and girls becoming women and so on, um, when I first recognised that need, I sort of asked myself, well, do I write a book? Do I do workshops, you know, conferences, seminars? And the reality is, is boys, men, but all people learn better experientially. So, so what we do is we we actually teach things. And, and so one of the basic things that we teach dads on our weekend adventures and for our longer adventures as well with the older kids is that are the three things that every son needs to hear from their dad or the three things that every daughter needs to hear from their dad. And, and then we, we drop it on the dads and we say, right, now you're going to get a practical application of this. And so off they go. And we actually have, it's almost like a bit of a ceremony where one father brings his son or his daughter up in front of everybody and publicly, you know, affirms them. And, um, and so that tests a dad, you know, because the reality is, is for men, uh, our greatest fear is failure or our greatest fear is that we're going to be exposed as actually not being a man. And so, you know, in, in, in the dark parts, in the private places, there's actually this fear that lurks and, and we think we're going to blow it if we, if we do something like that. And so the testing and the challenging that we offer dads during those weekends actually grows them. You see, you see them and more importantly, you see their sons and their daughters stand a couple of inches taller because of that experience it's really rich really beautiful the almost all the rites of passage i've read about are conducted outdoors <laughs> mm -hmm. in the wilderness it's a wilderness experience except for bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah um but um how how does your setting there um interact with your goal there so out, outdoors is important it is important um the thing is is i don't believe outdoors is absolutely essential throughout so we, we actually just for example um there's a place in tropical north queensland here um called mission beach and we actually we actually our base camp is mission beach resort so, you know, here's the thing is when you get dads, you know, in their 40s and 50s and 60s, you know, that they, they come that that most of us got bad backs these days. And so <laughs> you want a bed to sleep in. You don't want to be sleeping on the ground necessarily. But yes, we do outdoors. I mean, you know, an example of that 
would be we go out to the outer Great Barrier Reef and and we snorkel and there's an upgrade to scuba dive. Um, we we whitewater raft down the Tully River, which is probably Australia Australasia's best river, uh, best commercial river, and um, you know it featured as as one of the um, you know the World Championships were held here back in 2018 or 2019, and and uh, for for whitewater rafting, and so it's a brilliant river, it's a technical river, and and you really got to come together and work as a team on that, and it's World Heritage Rainforest, you know, it's it, it just snakes its way through this beautiful session so yes i think for boys especially but girls too they there's this that there's this desire for for beauty to to be out in the wilderness um mm. but you don't have to necessarily stay there and i think as the as the years go on as as the generations go on that 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 they like their creature comfort so we have we have the resort cater for food and we have the function room you know for our sessions and our small group discussions and so on so yeah it's um it's not the, the the testing and the challenging does certainly come through the outdoors but it's not just the outdoors i mean you know have having having fathers and sons side by side or fathers and daughters side by side listening to sessions and then going back into a small group um and and you know having a few questions from that session to discuss in their small groups, that's foreign to a lot of people today and uh, certainly a lot of young people today. And um, so that stretches them, that grows them. So this, the, the testing and the challenging, which is so important, it, it, it comes in a variety of ways. It doesn't necessarily have to come uh, in the outdoors. But the outdoors, I do believe, is a does play an important role in, in the overarching overall experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that um, when a, a young youngster sees their their father out, you know, coping with some kind of a challenge in the wilderness or in in the relationship, in becoming vulnerable, in in meeting the challenge of giving uh, generously into the relationship, um, that helps the child. It increases their respect for their dad, and. Um, it's uh it builds it builds some um, yeah it builds respect i think <laughs> yeah i think uh, so there's one of the one of the things that we do during our rite of passage experiences is we um we we raise the topic of story and about sons knowing their father's story actually really knowing them so what we actually do is we get on our first night together we have the dads introduce their sons they introduce themselves and their sons and then what we do is the second night, after the sons have settled in a little and done some outdoor adventure activities, um, we then have the sons introduce their dads. Tell us a little bit. You know your dad better than we do. We want to get to know him, so you introduce um, your dad. And then what happens is, is that they um, uh, that, that that's the only time we separate the fathers and sons or the fathers and daughters, and, and, and we send out the dads to have some we've got some strategic questions for them to discuss in their small groups one one you know three three dads together discussing these things um and and, and ultimately that they're, they're very pointed they're, they're, they they are targeted questions um which leads into the session that we do with the dads but with the session that whilst they're discussing those questions i have the sons and i share my story with my about my dad and how i never came to fully know him until three weeks before he passed away. Wow. And so I tell I tell them my dad's story. And I, I share that simply because we plan a seed very early on for the sons to think of a question they've always wanted to ask their dad mm -hmm. and specifically in and around knowing their father's story. And then on the la last full day together, we do a hike up to the summit of the mountain and and on that day, before we reach the summit, we branch out and the fa fathers and sons are in their pairs and they start eating lunch. And that's when the son asks his question. And ultimately, what it, what comes out of it is the father sharing his story and more often than not, what his life was like, you know, at his son's age. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in a world today that's we're, we're more connected than ever before and yet we're less connected than ever before. And so having a moment like that on the side of a mountain 
when when now a, a boy, a young man is learning his father's story, he he understands why dad is the way that he is. And and there's something really rich. I mean, I've had men come down off that mountain and just grab me and hug me and there and look at me in tears and say, you know, that was incredible like you know thank you thank you you know so yeah there's lots of lots of little moments like that that are interwoven throughout the experience oh that's beautiful you you said in in another place every child needs a rite of passage why do they need it when a boy doesn't receive a rite of passage when he when he's not invited into it he's gonna he's there's gonna he's gonna end up in two ways right he's gonna end up as he, he he's going to look like a, a, a man, but he's actually still a boy in a man's body, and, and we see that. You know, psychologists will will describe that that phenomenon as extended adolescence. You know, the Peter Pan syndrome. You know, you've got people now in their thirties and even forties. You know, boys in men's bodies, and and so it's so essential that we that we provide these skills, these this this clear and compelling vision for authentic manhood. Um, you know, uh, something that my mentor says, who's a, a, an American, um, Dr. Robert Lewis, he says, um, he says, you cannot become what you cannot define. So how does a boy become a man? And, but getting back to your original question, um, what ends up happening is, is, is he'll, he'll become one of two men if he doesn't, if he's not initiated in, the, in these ways. Number one is he will shrink away and, and kind of hide from anything that might actually require him to be a man. Um, and that's very, you know, he'll be, he becomes very passive and, and that's not good. It's not life-giving for him. It's not life-giving for others around him. And, and the other, the other sort of um, uh, destiny for, for that kind of man really is, is that he becomes very driven. He comes, he, he gets to the point where he tries to prove that he is a man. And and in the and in so doing, he can end up causing a lot of harm for those around him as well. 29 years of age. I was married for eight, nine years at the time. I was I was a father of three at the time. And and I but I didn't know, I didn't have that clear and compelling vision of what it means to be a man. If somebody had said, so there's, so there's really two things that are super important in this. And there's a bunch of things, but the two most important things, I believe, are that, that you have this clear and compelling vision. Without a vision, people perish. Without a, without a, if, a, if a boy or a young man doesn't have a vision for manhood, he's unrestrained. He's kind of flapping about in the breeze. He's, he's making it, you know, making stuff up, you know, and, and kind of walking along a buffet line and I'll have a little bit of this and a little bit of this and creates his own manhood. Um, eventually, um, the other thing is 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 that actually having a moment in time where he knows that he is a man. So one of the questions I I I ask men is, uh, tell me, are you married or not? You know, and and very quickly, it's a super simple question, and 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 I'll say, well, you know, a wise man will know the date that he was married. So for me, it's. 33 years ago, this coming Saturday, actually. So um, uh, June 22nd, 1991. And, and so I knew that I was married. And, and okay, so why did I know that I was married? Well, partly because there was a, um, uh, there was a celebration, there was a ceremony, there was a, it was marked. And we've got to have something. So, you know, when I say, okay, so you know when you got married, when did you become a man? And that, that is a really hard question for men to answer. And we want to be able to help the next generation of men have a very clear, compelling, you know, date. You know, they'll say on, you know, whatever the date might be, my dad within a community of men called me out of boyhood and into young manhood or called me out of young manhood and up and into authentic manhood. And I know what that is. See, it can be really quite devastating when a father says you're no longer a boy, you are a man. But if he does, if if dad or or a community of men or an organisation like ourselves doesn't provide for them that clear and compelling vision for what it means to be a man, then then he's left wondering, well, okay, I know that I'm a man, but I don't know what I'm doing, and 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 that's where dad and mentors, a community of men, really help, really need to be the guide for their sons 
through adolescence and 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 into adulthood really yeah i um was came across a study that said that the number of adults who know your child's name know your child by name will ha- correlates with their success later in life mm-hmm. um, so when they're a child if they are known to some extent by some of your friends they do better and also mm-hmm. the, a study showed that when a child knows uh, can tell his family history to some extent at least up into the grandparent level mm-hmm. um, he or she does better in in school and does better emotionally and uh, connecting um boys especially i think with their history and with not just the father but those in that age cohort uh, and maybe even the grandparent generation it is very valuable and has been proven important i know that there's um um, a man who who wrote a book, Milestone to Manhood, who who just did it individually. He didn't have a, a program to uh, look to like you have developed, and he just developed it with them um, for his own son. And he took him on a you know said we're going on a camping trip, and they stopped at a diner uh, for breakfast on the way, and there was the grandfather and two uncles, and they all joined. For that weekend and uh, the boy was um you know given this larger picture of manhood and uh, i think it, it's great that you you do these groups um it was too bad that that initial <laughs> trip with just one family signing up didn't work out but but it's good to for these boys to see other men other fathers also yes caring about their sons and potentially i don't know if they stay in touch with each other afterwards but it's a great basis for a friendship and a mentorship from absolutely absolutely yeah you, you spoke about something really important there you know what you was ultimately speaking about though you didn't use the word was identity you know so so that's a that's a part of this process is 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 for the boy or the girl like to 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 have that identity being bestowed upon them whether it's by dad by others um you know uncles the grandparents um you know that that is so important and and there's a um you know you can't you can't discover your destiny until you know your identity and so that's kind of way what what you were saying in a roundabout sort of way was when people do better when they know their identity because they know who they are. They don't have to prove themselves to be anybody else because they know who they are. You um, mentioned five essentials. Could you quickly tell us what they are or do we need? Yeah, to- sure. Like, and, and, and this is the thing is, is, um, uh, you know, I've already spoken about two of them, the, the, the two final ones really. So, so, but going down the list, it's, it's dad or a father figure. Somebody who delights in that child. Um, number number two, again, it's mentors and it's a community. So again, dad, whether it's a son or a daughter, you know, looks out there for a son. He's looking out there for good men, men, men who can add something to his son. And also inviting mum into, hey, let's look for some amazing women to to come and to be involved in our daughter's life and speak life and and truth in into them as well. Um so, so there's dad, there's there's a community of men mentors. Um, there's adventure. There's, there is the testing and challenging. It's got it. It's so important. Um, you know, we can't hide out behind screens indoors. You know, keeping us all so ridiculously safe that that we end up, you know, being incredibly anxious, being incredibly depressed. You know, we 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 need to we need to be tested, especially men. Um, but. You know, here's the thing is, is adventure sort of wired into the soul of a man, even if he doesn't believe that it is. And and so um, and, and for, for a woman, it's she she's wanting to be invited by a man. And that's the way it is with marriage. You know, a man asks him, asks a woman to marry. She, it's like this invitation into a greater adventure. 
um, and, and, and she responds accordingly. And the same happens with dad when dad invites his daughters into adventure. So adventure is key. Uh, again, there's that um, training and instruction. You know, when you don't, when you, when we don't, when we don't train our kids, um, they end up growing up to be angry. And I tell an incredible story about how that sort of panned out in, in my own life. Um, we've got to teach them skills and we've got to teach them. We, again, we, you cannot become what you cannot define. So we need to be able to teach them about authentic man or authentic womanhood um, for, for them to know, you know, know what that is so they can actually hit the mark. You know, it's no point in, you know, shooting at a target when you don't know where the target is. And then that ceremony, that that idea of sealing the process, um, really valuable. So they're the five things. Well, thank you very much for giving us these great pointers toward maturity. And um, I want to make sure everyone knows uh, to go to fatheringadventures.com. And if someone wanted to uh, cross the ocean blue and come all the way to Australia, uh, do you have um, Americans who come for this? We do, program? we do, we have. We've, we've actually had an American uh, a dad from South, um, uh, from Arkansas, who who came out with his eldest son in in 2010, and then brought his second son out in 2015. And I was blown away by that. I mean, that was a real, you know, I, I, I was, you know, it's it's one thing that we get lots of, you know repeat sort of participants bring their bring their other kids but when somebody flies across the pacific ocean but in true american fashion you know he was just like oh it's just across the pond i'm like i'd never heard of the the pacific ocean being called a pond before but um yeah we have people from dads from canada uh from from the us canada um europe uh you know asia um yeah, so they, they come down. We've also travelled to Nepal and uh, and also into China as well. So you know, offering these experiences. So you know, yeah. it's 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 like we we respond to invitations in that sense as well. Um, you know, we can't just expect that people will come to us. So we're prepared to to travel to others as well. We just need to make sure that there's going to be the demand of there, of course. But yeah. Well, thank you very much for the work that you do and for telling us about it. Most welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it, Leah. Oh, it was our pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Subscribe and review Conversation Balloons on your favorite podcast platform. Find me at leahfarish.com and on Instagram at L-E-A-H-F-A-R-I-S-H. -E